All right, I know y'all remember what Smith & Wesson did with their shotgun when they came out with it. All right, y'all ready for this? The new Smith & Wesson 9mm FPC. Yep, a folding 9mm carbine. Let's check it out. I think you guys are gonna really enjoy this. All right, let's check her out. Check out the extra mags, it's kind of cool. Ooh, a little cumbersome to get to those. All right, that's handy. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right, well, here we are. I alluded on Twitter a couple of weeks ago that there was going to be a really cool um, Smith & Wesson product dropping very soon. As you can see, here it is. But uh, really interesting, you know, a lot of folks have been asking, you know, a company like Smith & Wesson to get into the 9mm PCC game. And uh, I think that the way that they went about it is pretty clever here with the FPC. As you can see, it is a folding carbine. Um, there are a lot of things on the market. Um, we'll go ahead and just mention quickly, okay? Yes, it is very much like a kel Sub-2000. The kel Sub-2000 folds over the top and locks in place. Um, the M&P here, the Smith & Wesson, folds to the side, okay? And it locks into the charging handle. So it is a little bit fatter than a Sub-2000 in terms of the width, but one nice thing that they give you with that, I think that sets it apart considerably is you have the extra magazines on hand. So you can put two extra magazines right here on the buttstock and you have a proper buttstock that gives you a much better cheek weld and everything like that. Also, I think that they really did improve on, you know, the original folding PCC type of thing, like in the kel Sub-2000 in that with the charging handle, you actually have a traditional like T-style charging handle, which in my opinion, it does give you more leverage uh, than trying to work the little bolt on the Sub-2000, uh, you know, and lock it to the rear. Now, I know that a lot of folks are going to initially say, well, you know, like why, why this rifle over something like the kel Sub-2000? And I know I'm mentioning the Sub-2000 because it is the most direct comparison to something like this. And, uh, you know, I, I think that these are certainly nice and the features are pretty interesting as well. And I do like that you don't have to mess with your optic. So on this, because it falls to the side, your optic can stay zeroed and stay where it is. Now, uh, you could, in theory, SBR one of these things. Uh, the rail is actually pretty easy to cut down, uh, Chad and I noticed. So you could cut this rail down and shorten the barrel and get the suppressor length all the way back to where the buttstock is. And then you'd have it even more, um, you know, tiny than what it is right now. Now, obviously we are wearing a suppressor on this particular gun. This is a Griffin Armament Rev 45. So we are running a 45 uh, suppressor with a half by 28 adapter on this particular uh, gun. And this suppressor is sounding really nice. It's got tons of volume. Griffin is a great company, veteran owned and operated. Plus their meme game is definitely on point. So make sure you're checking out Griffin. Really good folks. Big shout out to Griffin Armament uh, for supporting our channel and for providing this suppressor for us to run on this particular gun today. The fore end is made out of polymer so that keeps things nice and lightweight. The barrel is not tremendously rigid or large. It's pretty much a standard pencil weight uh, PCC barrel like you would see on pretty much any type of a uh, nine mil PCC you may come to expect. Of course, it is a blowback. So the way that this gun operates is precisely just like you would expect. A huge mass, massive bolt with a huge massive pogo spring in there, <laughs> a pogo stick spring. And uh, you know, it is relatively brisk to pull that bolt back. Uh, in the manual of arms, they do show that on, on lock, when the bolt is locked to the rear, 
okay if you want to release it you can you can reach up and, and just and one finger it if you want but as this thing breaks in you know it's probably best to just reach up and use both fingers okay to uh, work that bolt there is an ambidextrous slide stop on both sides of the rifle and this is a rifle this is a full 16 inch barrel so you know with all this brace stuff that's going on they're talking about braces and they're trying to go after braces this is I think in Smith & Wesson's eyes, they wanted to get into this market because it makes it a little bit more evergreen. So if for whatever case uh, may be that maybe in the future, if braces somehow don't, uh, you know, wind up going our way in terms of fighting it in the courts and everything, you'll still have a folding rifle. But it's pretty interesting. You know, it does have a proper buttstock. Um, that mag release did kind of mess me up there in the intro, but mainly because you don't just pull them out. You do have to actuate this little lever to unlock it so it actually has like a magazine release for the additional magazines in the buttstock and I noticed that it was a little cumbersome because I have to actuate it from the opposite side so to unlock this magazine right here I've got to I mean I guess I guess you would just have to offhand it like this and reach down but you've got to be able to unlock it in addition to grabbing the mag as well so it was just a little bit cumbersome there in the intro that would just be a manual of arms thing see if i want to grab the one on this side you know that's kind of hard to do with my hand still on the fire control group or if i'm running around but i think from a survival rifle situation yeah see that that mag's a little hard to get out with you know you'd have to you'd have to grab it but i think in terms of you know this gun being used in a survival situation or as a potential option for a backpack gun uh, it's worth noting it does come with this really nice case here and you notice it's a, a slick side with no markings you know it doesn't say Smith & Wesson all over it it doesn't say hey there's a gun in here it's just a you know nondescript gray case with plenty of pockets so you could break this thing down strap it in here on the inside and you got plenty of pockets put your blowout kit in here uh, your medical supplies, additional magazines, cleaning kit, parts, all your little accoutrements, if you will, will fit in that case. So I thought that was a nice touch. Let's shoot the gun a little bit more. All right, we'll lock it to the rear. It's already locked to the rear. So it's just got that big, heavy honking bolt moving back and forth. Uh, so the recoil is going to be a little more stout than some PCs that you might be used to. It is literally just a metal tube. <laughs> with a big old honking bolt and a big old heavy spring in there. Um, oddly enough, one interesting feat as well is that the receiver on this gun is the actual tube itself. This metal tube in the rear is considered the receiver. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And there is a heck of a lot of potential in this platform uh, for conversions and things. So if you ever wanted to convert it to another caliber, I mean, it looks to me like you just got you know, one pin here for the hinge for the, uh, for the barrel. You could totally just change around configurations with this if you wanted to, I would imagine. And there probably will be some other calibers uh, coming in the future, but really excited to show this off. We are wearing a uh, ACSS uh, G2 Cyclops. This is from Primary Arms. This is one of their little prism sights. I think it's only like a one and a half or two and a half power sight, you know, real low power. This one is a one power. So, you know, pretty much meant to shoot with both eyes open very, very fast. So let's try this other mag here. Again, it, it, if I'm holding the rifle like this with my, you know, firing hand, my non-support hand, I can come in and grab this extra mag here. No problem. It's just going back over there is kind of a little bit more difficult, you know, because the human body is what it is. But I would imagine just for a survival situation, it is nice to have those extra mags on tap. And since they already had to have a buttstock here anyway, um, that's a great way to utilize that space for something useful. You know, if you just throw this in, the, in your backpack or throw it in the vehicle and all you have is the rifle and maybe you don't have the case with it, you always know you got two extra mags in, in, in backup. Okay, these mags here are 17 round mag bodies with the Turan Tactical extensions on them. I've had these MMP mags for years. They've been holding up great. These hold 23 shots. Smith & Wesson ships this gun with one standard magazine. It's just the regular, uh, thinks, yeah, 17 shot mag body. 
And then they include these 22 shot mags too that have their factory polymer um, extensions on them. And they also have the little grip swells on the bottom so that when they're inserted, it's nice and flush and gives you a little bit of a step down there. And that's nice. The magazine release on this gun is ambidextrous, can be swapped to either side. You've got an ambidextrous slide stop or bolt stop. The safety is in a very nice location up there. You can use your index finger to push it and apply the safety. All right, so that's on fire, that's on safe. Now the only thing is you can't actuate the safety with your firing hand without using your support hand. So if you wanted to put the safety back on, you are gonna have to reach up and just push it over. So that's one thing from an ergonomic standpoint. I do like the weight, it's very light, very easy. So here you've got, this is what folds it. You just push this little button kind of forward and then it folds towards you. And then for cleaning, of course, you've, you've got your barrel right there. So keeping that chamber clean and keeping the barrel scrubbed out is real easy. Let's uh, give this thing a try. Shoot a couple more rounds here. Uh, these are 147 grain full power Remington UMC. Okay, is what we were shooting there uh, in the intro. I've also got some Remington Subsonic. These are 147 grain subs. We're gonna go ahead and run some of those right now. So these are the Subsonic specific rounds from Remington. We'll try them out here in the FPC. They should be pretty quiet. Oh, yep, the latch came loose on that. <clears throat> I might not have uh, latched it all the way. Let's try that again. Huh, interesting. All right. All right. So, want to mention there, I did have the gun actually come unlocked on me, but I think I didn't have the latch pushed in all the way. That was my fault. So when you go to unfold this thing, give it a, give it a good, good sturdy smack. You're not gonna hurt it, just like on a Sub 2000. The charging handle on this gun does not reciprocate. Uh, it does unlock and move to the rear, of course, so that you can, you can run this thing. Just make sure that you push that charging handle all the way back forward and get it to a good solid lock before you start shooting it. Make sure it's locked so it doesn't come loose when the gun is cycling. You know, the recoil impulse on this thing is not bad at all. Very smooth recoil. I know some people are gonna hate me for saying this, but I would say maybe modestly smoother recoil than the Sub 2000, mainly just by proxy of this gun maybe weighing a little more especially the way we have it set up with the suppressor and you've also got that extra mass for the buttstock. I think it helps balance the rifle a lot. And if you have full magazines in the stock, you're also getting a little bit of extra weight there in your shoulder and that's kind of helping to counterbalance, you know, because the gun is heavier at that point. So that is gonna help uh, the weight of the gun is not gonna have as much felt recoil. That was one question that I was getting from some folks on Twitter. They were asking me if I thought the Sub 2000 was a hard kick in nine millimeter. Well, yeah, of course it is, because it's a tube gun, because <laughs> it's a huge hunk of steel moving on a giant spring back and forth, and this gun is no different. Like, it, it uses that exact same type of blowback, uh, which is fine, it's reliable, uh, it's consistent, but you know, you're gonna have a little bit more recoil, you know? All right shoot a little bit more and I do have some defensive ammo we're going to take our sodas out with all right this is the full power Remington UMC all right and this is the factory 22 round magazine good stuff like it. You do have a polymer four in, so that helps keep the weight nice and light. Of course, you have M-lock accessory slots through and throughout. One thing that I noticed as well is you do have a single QD point here on the end of the buttstock. Um, there appears to be no other QD points for slings, but 
with this much M-lock uh, slots available to you, you could certainly just throw an M-lock, uh, you know, sling point on it there or something like that if you want. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna try some steel case. I do have one mag of Tula here. I didn't have a lot of this ammo laying around. I just want to try some steel case out because, you know, you got to make sure it can eat some steel. Okay, I over-inserted the magazine that time. Interesting. Okay, nice. Steel case ran good. I did over insert that magazine a little bit. I pushed it in kind of a tight, tight lock there. Yeah, so I can see why Smith & Wesson included, um, you know, these little, these little grip swells here on the higher cap mags, because they were probably worried about people over inserting the mags a little bit. You can see that on there, even on the 17 rounder, they put those swells on there. So I would imagine that if you had some M&P mags laying around, you probably want to pick some of those up because that's probably going to help, uh, you know, make sure the mags aren't being overinserted. And you know, I did, I did hit on it pretty hard, you know, when I when I loaded it. All right, a couple of more of the full power 147 Remington UMC, and then we're going to try some defensive ammo out on these sodas up close. And I've also got some sodas 50 yards away. So I think you guys get the idea. It's pretty cool. Of course, we're going to keep testing, keep shooting this thing, but this is kind of meant to be a first look at this. I know a lot of folks are seeing these things pop up, so we wanted to show it off and give you guys an idea what this thing is all about. Nice. Very smooth trigger too. I want to make mention of that. It's got the exactly the type of MMP trigger you'd come to expect. So I'm not trying to throw mud on Keltex Parade, but the, the standard trigger on the Sub 2000 does leave a little bit to be desired. Um, I love the Sub 2000. I, I'm not here to, to take a dump on that gun because I've owned Sub 2000s for years and I think they're fantastic. And I think they do come in at a very fair price point. Uh, we did receive this gun very early in order for us to get some time in on it and do some shooting with it and try to give you a little bit of an our, our idea of how we feel about it and everything like that. Uh, the MSRP on this gun is, hasn't even been released yet. I have no idea what the MSRP is just yet, um, but I'm sure you'll see it. Just do a quick search or whatever. Um, I want to shoot some defensive ammunition and that Rev 45 is sounding really nice on this. Lots of volume. All right, this is some Remington Ultimate Defense full-size handgun, okay? And this is plus P, 9 millimeter, 124 grain with the Golden Saber projectile. I want to mention something about ammo. They don't recommend plus P plus ammo in this particular gun. When I read the manual, uh, plus P is good to go, but they do not recommend plus P plus. Just something to be aware of. I mean, there's... I, I don't think that there's a heck of a lot of people out there saying, oh, let me go find some plus P plus nine mil ammo. I think most people are just gonna run some, you know, HST or Spear Gold Dot or some, you know, Remington Ultimate Defense or something like that. Okay. Good to go. Let's give it a try. 124 grain ammo, we got some soda bottles. All right, got a couple of guys in the rear back there. All right, I want to make note of something. I can't necessarily say that the gun is designed to work this way. I don't know if it's just a byproduct or something. I didn't happen to notice anything in the manual about this, but on the last shot, that charging handle consistently, I guess from the inertia, when the bolt stops, it kicks the charging handle kind of out of the slot. 
and it sort of goes back and bumps you in the face. But <laughs> the cool thing about that is that's how you know you're empty. So I've noticed that every single time that the gun has ran empty, that charging handle has kind of fl flew back and just give me a little gentle kiss in the face. N nothing, it didn't hurt, but I was kind of like, oh, cool, the gun's empty. And because of the mass of this bolt, trust me, you, you know, you know when it stops, <laughs> you know, when it locks to the rear, you can definitely feel a huge difference in the recoil impulse when the bolt locks to the rear. Just like you guys have been shooting ARs long enough, you know when, 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 you, when you're on the last round of your magazine, you don't need to look down and, and, and look or whatever or, or check. You know from the feel of the recoil impulse that that bolt is locked to the rear on your AR. And this is totally the same type of feeling. Like you can feel it locked to the rear and you're good to go. Uh, and that is one nice thing about this gun too. It does lock to the rear on the last shot um, in the magazine whereby the kel uh, I believe, they do not have a last round bolt hold open to my knowledge. Uh, you just have that little notch in the receiver and you have to lock the bolt to the rear and up and to the right. And uh, we will do a full video in the future where we talk about, uh, we'll, we'll get a kel out and just compare the two directly. Uh, I'm probably not gonna make that video today. I really just wanted this to be kind of a first exposure. But all in all, I'm very pleased with this particular rifle. It has a bit of heft to it. It weighs a little bit more than a standard sub 2000. You get a few more bells and whistles. You get a true uh, bolt stop, bolt release. You get the last round bolt hold open on the magazine. You get a better charging handle. You get the ability to hold your mags in the butt stock. You have a proper butt stock. You have a very usable rail system. And yeah, I think that this is certainly a contender. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be really curious to find out uh, how much these things cost. I don't know on the cost just yet because this is probably being filmed at least a week or two before the gun is actually being released. But that's our first look at it. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We hope you liked it. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, Iraq Veteran 8888 on Twitter um, for deals, behind the scenes stuff. That's where I post all my personal stuff like, you know, playing with the dogs or political commentary or if there's bills going through Congress or anything going on in the gun world, I try to keep my fingers on the pulse, keep some information flowing for you. So if you wanna stay abreast of everything going on related to the channel, related to us, and to have more of a permanent finger on the pulse of, of what I've got going on, Twitter is definitely the place to find me outside of YouTube. So make sure you go follow us on Twitter. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you all had a great day. We'll see you. Many more videos on the way and Good stuff. I'm going to get back to it. <laughs>